50 years ago, a diagnosis of cancer in a child was a death sentence with few survivors. The medical profession was split on the ethics of treating the child with one sector saying it was unethical to raise the hopes of parents and it was unethical to subject the child to a regime of harsh treatment that did not change the outcome. Then 30 years ago, when a child was diagnosed with cancer, the survival rate had improved to around 30% through treatment via chemotherapy and radiation. Nowadays, although it remains the major cause of child death other than accidents, the survival rate is around 80%, with some leukemias around 97%. We are thrilled with the improved outcomes and the hard work of the dedicated medical professionals who made it possible. However, we do not accept that one child in five diagnosed with cancer will die. We do not accept that two out of the remaining four children will suffer late effects from the radiation and chemotherapy treatment. The late effects from having chemotherapy and radiation treatment can include learning difficulties. For example, children have trouble spelling, reading, or they suffer short-term memory loss. The children can suffer physical disabilities. For example, if the children have had radiation in isolated areas, then the bones may grow at different rates, so they can have problems with their limbs. The children can suffer social difficulties. They spend a long time in hospital and these children have problems socialising and going back to school. The Child Cancer Foundation will continue to fund research and assist medical professionals to undertake training and attend seminars to improve the outcomes for our children. While most parents want their children to succeed in life, the prayers for our children are that they will survive. In the Manawatu Wanganui region, we currently have 18 children on treatment. But this does not include the families of the five children that died last year that still need our help. The children that have finished treatment but are still being watched carefully for relapses, those families need our help. The children that are suffering from the late effects of chemotherapy and radiation treatment, those families also still need our help. I'd like to put a scenario to you. Imagine travelling two to three hours to your local hospital because your doctor requires further tests for your child. As a mother, you expect to have the test done and be home in time to collect the other children from school and cook dinner. You are given the diagnosis that your child has cancer and you are in hospital for the next seven weeks. What happens if you had a full-time job? Who is going to pick up those other children from school that day? What is going to happen to the other children while you're in hospital with your sick child? Who is going to feed your pets? Who is, who is going to pay for all those extra costs associated with having a sick child? Once a child is diagnosed, a family support worker is notified within the Child Cancer Foundation. They will visit the hospital and provide the family with a starter kit, which includes petrol vouchers, food vouchers, phone cards, and lots of information about coping with the weeks ahead. The money that has been raised from Big Rigs Day will help our local children and our local families and will help us purchase the vouchers for these starter kits. We also financially assist families when needed throughout their whole journey as unexpected costs come up. If a child has been treated in Auckland or Christchurch, we need to pay for the siblings or other support people to travel to the place of treatment and accommodation may be required for these families as well. When a child passes away, assistance is given to the family to assist with the costs of the funeral. The Child Cancer Foundation receives no government funding or funding from other cancer-related organisations. We are dependent on the goodwill of ordinary New Zealanders for our resources. The Manawatu Wanganui branch currently has 17 members on the committee. We are all volunteers. We have a paid family support worker of 12 hours a week and she is funded from national office. Our main guiding principle is to ensure that no child suffering from cancer or their family should ever feel alone.